Recutting chips with an end mill is never a good idea. Not only can it ruin the surface finish, it also wears the cutter faster, builds up friction and, inevitably, heat. Chips tend to linger in deeper grooves, forcing the cutter to plow its way back through them. On larger machines, they are flushed away with generous floods of coolant. But in my small workshop, that simply isn't an option. So far, I've managed with bursts of compressed air whenever chips became troublesome. If the power feed was running, I at least had one hand free for the air gun. But things got rather awkward when my hands were otherwise occupied. Clearly I needed a better solution, and that's what this video is about. I hope you enjoy watching. At the core, there are two hurdles I need to tackle. The direction of the airflow, and the amount of it. I'll start with the first one, and try to create a puffing device that will hopefully prove to be highly adaptable. Here's a rough sketch of what I have in mind. A small nozzle, mounted with two ball joints on a magnetic base. That way, I can position the puffer freely and remove it just as easily when it's not needed. Time to go and make some chips. Off camera, I've already pre-drilled this base and glued in an aluminium tube. Just like in a pot magnet, this tube helps concentrate the magnetic field at the bottom giving it extra holding power. If you'd like to know more about how that works, take a look at my three videos on building a permanent magnetic clamp. Later, a 12mm ball will sit inside this base. To prepare for that, I drill a 10.5mm through hole, then use a boring tool to widen it to 12mm, stopping just 1.25mm short of the bottom. Using the compound slide, I taper the narrowing at the top of the base. This way, the ball can protrude a bit further without popping out. An internal chamfer will later allow the nozzle tube to tilt well past 90 degrees. A through hole of 4mm in the hardened ball is just the sort of delicate little job my micro mill enjoys. From acetal, better known as POM, I'm making a pressure ring. This will press against the back of the ball, sealing the front against air leaks, while also stopping the ball from rotating quite so freely.
Here I'm drilling the hole for the air supply. This hole also needs to pass through the palm ring. By giving the brass inlet tube a light tap, I can mark the exact spot where the hole in the ring has to go. I've made the pressure ring just slightly too high, so that the magnet, pulling itself firmly upwards in the base, presses against this ring and provides just the right amount of friction for the ball. The tube can tilt smoothly, yet stays stable in any position. In principle, this little setup is self-adjusting. A thin steel plate will serve as the shield for the underside. Here I'm sanding it nice and round and perfectly flat on my homemade belt sander. That was the base, now complete. Time to move on to the head of this little puffing contraption. The pressure ring for the head is also made from POM. Using a ball nose end mill, I ensure the plastic fits snugly around the 8mm ball. While I could rely on the magnet as a pressing aid in the base, here a slightly compressed O-ring will take on that noble role. Using my micro mill, I drilled the two holes for the cover plate. Everyone has their own preferences, of course, but when it comes to truly delicate M2 taps, this is how I like to do it. The thumb and forefinger of my left hand are just strong enough to hold the tiny workpiece, and I've never once managed to snap one of those fragile little taps this way, much to my and their relief.
Next up is drilling the hole for the air supply in the head. Since it works out conveniently this time, I also drill through the pressure ring in one go. Using a reamer, I bring the hole to the perfect size so the brass tube fits snugly. And just like that, it's already time for the most enjoyable part, the assembly and first tests. The little puffer is ready, but I'm far from done. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I had two problems. The second one is shown here in numbers. I need enough pressure to blow chips out of some deeper grooves, ideally around 2 bar. Even with the tiny 1.2mm hole in the puffer, my little compressor can barely keep up, spending a whopping 40% of the time just catching its breath. What I came up with to fix that and whether it actually works as intended, you'll see in the next video. Until then.